I'm going to be a little self-destructive here and I'm going to tell you that if you want to be a great photographer and who doesn't want that? If you want to be amazing, stop watching YouTube. Go out and shoot because that's where it happens. That's where you get good. And you don't need to go far. Your neighborhood is just fine. Just go out. Wasn't it Monet? who did all his greatest work in his own garden. It's not about where you go, it's about what you do. But if you can spare a few minutes before you go out and shoot, I'm gonna give you five things to think about. We all been there. You're wanting to go out and shoot, but not really inspired to do so because, well, we don't know what to shoot. And also thinking that the gear we have, it's, uh, well, either not good enough or not the right gear. Because I, I, I've, I've been spending a lot of time in landscape, for example, my gear is big and heavy. So I'm thinking I need a different uh, uh, set of gear to for my street photography and uh, and also maybe that your knowledge isn't good enough so you need to be looking at YouTube and, and learning stuff. A lot of reasons your brains come up with you know, so you don't go out and shoot. And I'm gonna give you five things that might help you overcome that. And the first thing is projects. Work on projects. I took my camera out last night for a photo walk. I wanted to see if, uh, if I found something interesting to shoot. I didn't, which, which is strange because a week ago I had the exact same conditions, really, this is the same time, same light, and I got a few keepers. The only difference was that last night I had no plan, I just went out to shoot something, but a week ago I went out with the purpose to play with light and shadows, and because I knew what I was looking for, I found frames everywhere. Project can be short, just something for a single photo walk. It can take weeks, it can take years, it, it doesn't matter, it's, you decide. But it's always good to have a few ongoing projects. It can be anything, really, just plan something. This is important to, to implement in your workflow because if you're always reacting to something that happens, you, you're always going to be too late. Watch people, watch what they're doing, where they are walking, are they walking into something interesting, some background, some stuff, you know, it, in the direction they're going is something happening that, that could make the photo more interesting than just shooting a person walking. Try to plan more instead of always trying to react. It will produce better photos. You will produce better work. Look, if you need to ask about settings in a, in a, in a certain photo, it, it is fairly obvious that you do not understand the basics of photography, which is aperture, speed and ISO. You know what it is, but you know, the functional part of it. Why do you change ISO? Why do you change speed and not aperture, for example? And you and you really need to understand that. You need to you really need to invest the time to learn that. If I show you this photo and tell you the exact settings I used, you will have to find yourself in the exactly the same conditions, the same light the same distance from the subject, even the same sensor size on the camera, and, and more, to get the same result I got here. And on top of that, this photo is edited, so there is no way telling you the settings will help you in any way. But if you know what you get with a low aperture, what you get with a high aperture, then you can then you can get the desired depth of field in your photo. And if you understand what happens with a low speed like here, and with a high speed where you freeze everything, you can set the speed for your vision. 
And ISO is just like, you know, if you want to shorten your exposure time, you can raise the ISO, but that, but the cost of high ISO can be grain. If you don't have this foundation, you are better off using some of the automatic settings like auto or P or semi-automatic settings like aperture priority or speed priority. Just use the gear you got. It is good enough. These photos, for example, I shot them with my phone. Most smartphones have, have software where you can set the aperture and speed. So, so you can actually do a lot with your phone. But in this photo, I, I, I did nothing like that. It's just uh, automatic. Everything is automatic because it's not about the settings. It about, it's about your vision. It's not about your gear. It's about what you can do with the gear you have. But if you have better equipment, just use that. Don't buy anything until you understand what you need. Don't ask someone what lens should I buy. Go shoot, learn what lens you need, then go buy. To tell a story with photo, it's usually better to include more in the frame. So a wide angle lens would maybe be better than, than a zoom lens. I use my 35mm prime a lot for street, but probably my 24 to 70 I use the most. You might ask why would you use a 35mm prime when that focal length it is within your uh, uh, 24 70 lens? Well, the biggest reason is that my 35mm prime is f1.4 while my 24 to 70 is f2.8 and I like shallow depth of field. If you want to get really good, you need to shoot a lot. And even if you consider yourself good, you also need to shoot a lot because truly amazing photos are rare. You have to work for this. There are no shortcuts in photography. And there you have it. Five things that might help you to improve your photography. Now it's time to go out and shoot, go practice. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.